Hi, I'm Dr. Jordan Weiner. In this video, I'm going to discuss obstructive sleep apnea. In this video, I will cover what sleep apnea is, how common it is, the symptoms of sleep apnea, the potential consequences if it's not treated, how it's diagnosed, as well as the treatment options, which include CPAP, oral appliances, and surgical procedures. Obstructive sleep apnea is the recurrent collapse and obstruction of the throat during sleep. The obstructions can last up to about 40 seconds. There can be partial collapse, referred to as hypopnea, or complete collapse, referred to as apnea. This results in a cyclical breathing pattern and fragmented sleep alternating between sleep and arousal. Occasionally, people wake up, but usually they do not. Sleep apnea is common. Mild sleep apnea affects about 25% of adults. Moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea affects about 10% of the adult population. There are many symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea. These include not feeling refreshed in the morning, sleepiness and fatigue during the day, frequent awakenings during the night, waking up with a headache, impaired cognitive function, loud snoring, gasping or irregular breathing seen by a spouse. However, some patients do not have any symptoms and don't know they have a sleep problem. There are many potential consequences of untreated obstructive sleep apnea. Overall, there's an increased death rate. Other conditions associated with sleep apnea include high blood pressure, abnormal heart rhythms such as atrial fibrillation, coronary heart disease, heart failure, cognitive impairment and dementia, increased auto accidents. These consequences can occur whether or not there are any symptoms. And the probability of complications is directly related to the severity of the sleep apnea, not the presence of symptoms. We diagnose obstructive sleep apnea with a sleep study. This can be done in the laboratory or for some patients using a home sleep test. We describe the severity of obstructive sleep apnea as either mild, moderate, or severe. Mild obstructive sleep apnea refers to 5 to 14 obstructions per hour of sleep. Moderate obstructive sleep apnea is 15 to 29 obstructions per hour, and severe obstructive sleep apnea is greater than 30 obstructions per hour. Low oxygen levels can occur and are more common with moderate and severe obstructive sleep apnea. Treatment can take many forms. First-line therapy for obstructive sleep apnea usually consists of PAP therapy. This refers to positive airway pressure. PAP therapy is the use of a small breathing machine connected to the patient by a hose and mask and worn on the face. PAP therapy is successfully tolerated by about 50% of patients. For successful PAP users, this can be life-changing. For others, it may not be possible to fall asleep or stay asleep with PAP therapy. Other therapies will be needed for these patients. One alternative to CPAP therapy is the use of an oral appliance. An oral appliance is usually made by a qualified dentist. It is worn in the mouth between the upper and lower teeth. It pulls the lower jaw forward, which has the effect of opening the back of the throat. Oral appliance therapy is successful in about 40 to 50% of patients, typically for mild to moderate sleep apnea. Tonsillectomy can be effective therapy for obstructive sleep apnea if the tonsils are enlarged. Another surgical procedure is called uvulopalatopharyngoplasty. This was introduced in the 1980s, but modified since to make it more effective. Uvulopalatopharyngoplasty, or UPPP, is not helpful for all patients, but can be extremely effective in patients with collapse of the airway due to collapse of the soft palate. Another surgical procedure is expansion sphincter pharyngoplasty. This is performed through the mouth, and expansion sphincter pharyngoplasty works by widening the back of the throat, but also by pulling the soft palate forward. This reduces sidewall collapse of the throat during sleep and is used for patients with collapsing sidewalls of the throat, causing their sleep apnea. In some patients, sleep apnea occurs because of collapse of the epiglottis, a cartilage flap above the vocal cords into the airway. This is usually unrelated to obesity or body weight. This collapse can be treated with an epiglottis stiffening operation or ESO. 
This is a non-invasive procedure performed endoscopically through the mouth. It results in pulling the epiglottis forward closer to the back of the tongue. For patients with collapse of the lower throat, hyoid suspension using the airlift system can be an option. This is performed through one or two small incisions below the chin. In the airlift procedure, we place a permanent suture between the hyoid bone and the mandible. This pulls the tongue and epiglottis forward. There is minimal postoperative pain. Finally, upper airway stimulation with Inspire is an option for many patients with obstructive sleep apnea. In this procedure, a nerve stimulator is placed in the right chest, which sends an electrical impulse to the nerve that moves the tongue. When a breath is taken, it moves the tongue forward and out of the airway to prevent obstruction. Inspire therapy is only active during sleep and completely off during day. Approximately 75 to 80% of patients will be successfully treated with Inspire. Please watch my video about Inspire therapy for more information and details about this form of treatment. Thank you for your attention.